Well, praise the Lord, saints. Uh, this is a recorded version of this morning's teaching. You know, I uh, was supposed to be on Facebook Live, but somehow I was having all kinds of difficulty getting on. So I decided, you know what? I'm not going to let this stop me. I'm going to still share what the Lord has put in my heart because he's provided something wonderful for us today. Amen. Good morning, Ecclesia. Good afternoon, Ecclesia. Whenever you're watching this post, I just greet you in the name of the Lord. Thank you for taking the time to watch this. Amen. I believe that God is doing a great work in the earth today, and I'm just excited about taking this opportunity to share it with you. Let's pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I bless you for what you are about to release into your people, Father. I thank you that it's significant that this morning, Father, you what you gave me to do, Father, and I believe it will go and touch the hearts of those who will hear it in the name of Jesus. I bless you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, those of you know, we're going through the entire book of Ephesians, and I believe it is a powerful word, and I believe it is something that we need to learn more about ourselves as we study the book of Ephesians. Uh, Ephesians 4, verses 11 through 13 reads, And he gave some apostles, some prophets, and some evangelists, some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the fullness of the statue of Christ. I've been dealing with this section on fivefold ministries, ministers, however, and I want to just, again, recap some of those things. And I also want to remind you that these series, I want you to use them as study starters. Uh, use them as a time to, to be able to go in and check the Word of God out. Amen. And study them. with. And I, I really encourage you to get in small groups to go in and look at these and study and check out. Go be like the Bereans. Go in and see if these things are so. Even as you hear the teaching, take notes and uh, share the videos during your gatherings. And uh uh, discuss it and get clarity from the Holy Spirit. Praise God. We've talked about the ministry gifts, specifically the teacher, the pastor, evangelist, and the prophets. And I want to now move into the uh, the the commission or call of the apostle. Uh, but before I do, I want to remind you of one final thing about the prophets that I shared on our last series. And that is that uh, when you want to understand prophecy, personal prophecy, Many times we go to this idea of two or three witnesses, and I have found in Scripture that really every time you see that term, two or three, it had nothing to do with prophecy. Uh, but so it's important that we understand really what these witnesses are, and I'm just going to give you them by name, and then you can go back and look at some of the former uh, teachings and, and discuss them. That is the Word of God, the inward witness, spiritual counsel, your ordered steps, the peace of God, and the Holy Spirit. These are the primary uh, gifts, uh, excuse me, uh, witnesses that you need to rely upon when you are seeking uh, what the Lord is speaking into you. Now, I want to get into the 21st century or just the, uh, the call of the apostle as a whole. Um, I believe the apostle is very unique, and uh, I want to spend some time on that one, because, mainly because I am an apostle, praise God. And I want you to understand more and more about the apostle. And I believe as I teach this, one of the things I first want to teach and share rather, I'll give my te my personal testimony about my call and, and how I came to become an apostle and uh, and just where I'm at with, with that walk in the in the name of the Lord. Let me give you some things that are, are being taught about apostles. There's a lot of extremes about who po apostles are and what they do. Some have them at the top of the five-fold heap, you know, that they're the top one. And uh, Some teach that they have all the gifts in them, and others teach that all the other gifts serve them. And uh, some say they're just plain old sent ones, and they're not anything special. And so we go to these extremes and what we teach apostles are. Uh, I believe apostles have more of a commission than they do of a calling. They are foundational gifts. They're pioneers. <clears throat> they establish doctrine. Uh, they're, they're in constant movement, and they're not necessarily static. Uh, usually, they're not over a single congregation, yet we do find, like James uh, being in Jerusalem, Timothy in Ephesus, and Titus in Crete, you know, we understand that they have those times, okay? They don't have these networks that we see today, okay? They nurtured relationships, but they didn't have networks. We'll get, get into that a little later. 
and they worked in teams. Uh, they were not lone wolves. Uh, so it's important that you understand these things about apostles. I want to spend some time now and just talk about my call. And as you understand how God has called me, uh, maybe you'll uh, understand more about who I am and understand a little bit more about me as an individual. And because uh, apostle is something that the Lord added to me. I am still the same guy prior to that. It's just that I have a commission. I have a purpose. I have an assignment from the Lord. Uh, in 1988, uh, during a time of prayer, the Lord spoke something to me that uh, at that time made no sense, and what sense it did make did not really set well with me. And that was the Lord spoke to me and said I would be a part of what is known as an apostolic renewal. Now, again, I had no idea what apostolic renewal meant. In fact, uh, not to uh, be disparaging, but I just want you to be—I need to be honest that when I heard of an apostolic, I'm thinking of a particular denomination. And I'm thinking of how our women would have to dress and how and all the, how they have to wear their hair and no makeup and uh, or just I mean that's what was going through my mind when I heard apostolic renewal. Okay, so it didn't really set well, but I know the Lord spoke that to me. I've called you to be part of an apostolic renewal, and then there were those who start coming around me and start prophesying that I was an apostle. Now, be honest with you, I rejected that. I really rejected it because I was a historical cessationist, and I'm using the term historical to bring it to, to light what I mean, because I really believe that there were no apostles after the original 12, okay? And I, you know, I, you allow for Paul because, you know, somebody had to take Judas' place, and we figured it wasn't Matthias, you know, so we figured it had to be Paul. So basically, though, I just stopped at that first 12, and that was it, and there were no more apostles. Now, something began to take place. God began to, to shift me and mold me uh, as I walked. And in March 23rd, 1994, uh, during a time of prayer, the Lord gave me this word of, out of Isaiah 45, 13. And uh, I've raised you in righteousness. I'll direct you in all your ways. You shall build my city. Let go of my captives and not for price of reward. And so, again, this is in 1994. And I understood this now. Again, I was still functioning as a pastor. And also, I... Uh, did not really embrace the idea of being an apostle. In August of uh, 22nd of 1994, we had we were having prayer uh, in our building every morning, and we'd have this 6 a.m. prayer. And one morning, uh, one of the women there uh, said she had a word for the Lord from me, and the word was Isaiah 45, 13. Again, uh, again, if you know what I taught about two or three witnesses, you know, I just didn't go run off and say, wow, I, you know, I, I almost took it as a spiritual coincidence, but, you know, it did catch my attention that she took me to that very scripture. Uh, and then I was still getting these prophecies of being an apostle. Uh, and, and along with that, there was another part of it that I was getting a lot of, and that was uh, the unusualness of my ministry call. Uh, not exclusiveness. I want to make be clear that, you know, some people say when you're saying unusual that you kind of be so big and different. No, it was not exclusiveness. It was just an unusualness uh, uh, or not even a better than this. You know, I mean, it wasn't any of those things. It was just a work uh, that was outside of the norm. That's what I understood it to be. And I, I did not recognize that as being the foundation of being the pioneering aspect of my commission. I, I did not realize because uh, keep in mind, I hadn't even accepted the idea that I could even be an apostle. Amen. Another interesting word I received during this time was a, from a brother out of Kirksville, Missouri, named Steve Youngblood. And he began to talk to me about, you know, equipping the people around me and equipping them for this reason, not just equipping, because that's a five-fold call anyway, but just equipping, equipping them because I had to empower them so that I could be free to go forth and move and minister out. He says, if I don't do that, I'd always be frustrated. And again, I, I didn't, I, I, that was a little word that I received, but it was like a precursor to some of the other things the Lord was beginning to work in my life. Uh, during this time, uh, there was one prophetic word that did come along that really began to shift how I began to look at apostles. And that was a brother who came, and when he came to our, our, our ministry, he was ministering. Uh, many of you know this brother, uh, I don't. Uh, his name is Brother Russell Blackman, amen, and he prophesied this word to me. He said, study apostles. That's all he said, study apostles. The Lord said to study apostles. Well, 
Again, that was a different type of word. It wasn't saying that you were apostle, but that you were called, just go and study them. And when I began to do that, I began to find all the material I could on, on, on apostles and uh, a couple of unique books that stand out to me was one called The Last Apostles on Earth by uh, Roger Sapp, uh, The Ministry Anointing of the Apostle by John Eckhart, and Apostles, Prophets, and the Coming Moves of God by Dr. Bill Hammond. And those three books uh, really spoke something to my spirit. And, and if nothing else, I discovered the presence of apostles after the original 12, and a, specifically the Ascension Gift apostles. But I did not; it did not fully convince me that I was one. Okay, but it was be, I was beginning to measure things in my life against what I now learned. Okay, in 1999, I attended a prophetic conference because I was understanding more about uh, the prophetic ministry at that time. And I could, uh, attended this conference in Grand Haven, Michigan, and Apostle John Eckhart and, and Prophetess Mary Crum, they shared this word with me. And basically, it went like this. If you do not acknowledge the call on your life, you will damage yourself and those you lead. Now, they neither one of them specifically mentioned me being an apostle, but I knew when I heard that exactly what was being spoken to me. I understood it. I understood that if I did not acknowledge my call as an apostle because it was stirring in me by this time, it was really, really beginning to, to germinate in my spirit. And if I didn't acknowledge that call, that I was going to damage myself and those around me. So this is what I first acknowledged that I was called as an apostle. That was 11 years, 11 years after the Lord first, first spoke to me that I would be a part of an apostolic renewal. But now that I was an apostle, now what do I do? I mean, here I am, I'm an apostle. But what was, what was I supposed to do after that? You know, uh, I, I tried to model myself after others. I looked around, saw different apostles uh, and uh, individuals who said they were apostles. And, and so I just tried to model myself after what I saw other people do. And uh, that didn't go over too well because I was trying to be something that, that I was very uncomfortable with being. And I really felt like... Uh, I was wearing a pink suit with purple and orange stripes. You know what I mean? I just did not feel uh, comfortable doing that. Uh, I tried to model after others, and that didn't work. Uh, and then, as a result of that, I, I came across another book by a gentleman by the name of Jonathan David. And that was the first time I saw that there were different types of apostles in Scripture. Not only there were ascension gifts apostles, but there were different types. Everyone did not do the same thing. They each had a various uh, a commission, uh, a purpose, and something that God has assigned to them. And that really just stirred something in my spirit that says, you know, look, I don't have to model myself after everyone. And that really was comforting to me as I began to move forward in what I believe God had called me to do. And then God began to confirm that I was an apostle. I mean, I remember walking up to a local uh, grocery store one day, and uh, I was really uh, taken aback by a person who walked up to me and uh, just out of nowhere, and I, I'm uh, out of respect for the person, I'm not going to mention the name, but they just said, how dare you call yourself an apostle? And I, I mean, I was taken aback. Here I was at the grocery store. Hello, how are you doing? How dare you call yourself an apostle? And then it became a little, <clears throat> how do I respond to this? And But as I began to hear that, I began to realize that, you know, God was uh, putting that out there, not only for me to hear it, but also to understand that, you know, that, you know, he has called me to something and everyone is not going to accept what you believe you're called to be. I mean, some people are just going to downright reject it. Another time the Lord confirmed it was uh, during a time of deep trouble. I mean, we were going through all kinds of issues and uh, I don't want to rehearse those issues, but they were very difficult. And when you're going through problems, sometimes you become vulnerable in your soulless realm and, and you don't know how to handle things. And so I went to lunch with a friend of mine and we were there and he just looked at me and said, you know, you're not an apostle. You know, how could you call yourself an apostle? And he began to outline the, the traditional things that we believe apostles do, just, just very generic outlining. He said, you don't do any of those things because you don't do those things. You're not an apostle. And what you need to do, now here's the cl clincher, what you need to do is stop calling yourself an apostle and come up under so-and-so who can teach you how to really raise up a church like you're supposed to. And, you know, I, I heard that. I did not respond to them, but I, I know my heart being so troubled, I did begin to, for a moment, there, sit there and begin to question, 
you know, may, maybe I'm not one. Maybe, maybe I should uh, do something different. Maybe I should, you know, maybe I've missed God. So we finished our lunch and I went out to my car. And as I got in my car, the spirit of the Lord spoke to me just as clear as anything. He said to me, don't you ever deny what I've called you to be. And I knew right then that God had called me as an apostle. I did not understand all the ramifications. I didn't know everything I was supposed to do. I didn't know even how to become an apostle or what I was supposed to do as an apostle. I was, I mean, I was still at a very infancy stage, but I knew then that God had said, I have called you as an apostle. So then it got back to uh, the Lord reminding me then of Isaiah 45, 13. And out of that, he said, now this is your apostolic mandate. I've raised you in righteousness. I'll direct you in all your ways. You shall build my city. You shall let go my captives and not for price or reward. And I really then began to study that passage. I began to found, find out that that was a word that was given over Cyrus, uh, who un, really was not a uh, necessarily a godly person, but the fact is God used him and uh, and I was really amazed that, you know, that God gave me that word. But still, at the same time, I knew that was the word the Lord spoke into my heart, that I've raised you in righteousness. The first thing I am committed to, I have to walk in right standing with number one, God, and then with everyone who I come in contact. I have to be in right standing. Number two, he says, I'll direct you in all your ways. That means in everything that I do, I don't care what it is, I am to be directed by the Holy Spirit in everything that I do. I cannot go out and do anything of my own. I remember the Lord spoke to me years ago after having given me a vision. And at the end of that vision, he spoke to me. He said, in all that is before you, I am with you. And he has proven that to be such a, a true word in my life. There's been times that I felt so alone, so disappointed, so discouraged, but I realized that God was with me. I mean, he always showed up and showed me something to let me know that all that was before me, he was with me. Praise the name of the Lord. So I was excited about that. He said, I'll, I'll raise you in righteousness. I'll direct you in all your ways. Then he said, you shall build my city. Now, and when I start thinking about the city, I'm thinking in terms of a geographic, a governmental city and so forth. But the Lord began to show me more and more that, you know, he, he, his city, his people, the, the, the people of God, I shall build. I understand the word city there, but this is what he was sharing with me, that I was to build uh, his people. So uh, if so, I, when I start talking about his city, city, I'm not talking about building the community I live in. Yes, I will have impact in that community. I believe that in all everything in my heart. I believe I'll have impact in the state and in the national uh, spheres. But the bottom line is, he said, you should be a builder of my city. And then the next phrase was, he said, you should let go my captives. And again, I took note of that. It said, let go my captives. He didn't say let go the captives. He said, let go my captives. And I be had to look at that because after a while, I began to understand what the Lord was saying. You see, I could have said, he said, let go the captives, those who are caught up in various types of lifestyle and drugs and all those type things. And, and I could have said, this is who he's called me to. But no, he said, you let go my captives. And I received a significant word uh, from a brother, uh, Dr. Kirby Clements. And the word that he gave at that time uh, really opened up something. He said, there are people who feel they have a ceiling placed over their lives. They feel like they're about to die. They feel like they need to move. They need to do something. They, they feel like they're lost. They don't feel like they're able to, to do anything. And, uh, and consequently, he said, God has raised you up for such a time and such a season. And I realized more and more, uh, as popular or unpopular, however you want to put it, I realized that my call is to individuals who feel locked, who feel like they're calling and their purposes are not being fulfilled. And that is not to draw people to me. I want you to hear this loud and clear. You see, sometimes we start talking about, well, I know if you come over here, you, your calling and your so forth can be really used. No, it's not about that. It's definitely not about that. I don't need people to come and sit under me in order for you to fulfill what God has called you to do. And so if you understand that, It'll help you uh, in your relationship with me because my thing is to empower you that you can become and be everything that God has called you to be, whether you're around me or not. It doesn't matter whether you're around me or not. You have to be in relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ and be able to fulfill what he's called 
you to do. So that's the number one thing. He said, I'll let go as captive. And the final part was not for price or reward. What I do, I do it because God called me to do it. I don't do it for fame. And I don't do it for sitting around saying that uh, somebody, I'm going to have an offering this week, you know, that you can come out and take care of me. No, it's all about doing what God has called me to do, not for price or reward. Praise the name of the Lord. So that Isaiah 45 uh, 13 is something that I live with, that I constantly measure everything that I do by. Uh, in hard times, I measure myself by Isaiah 45 13. When things are going good, I measure myself by Isaiah 45 13. Well, regardless of what I'm going through, this is how I measure myself because I want to know that I'm doing exactly what God has called me to do. Do I stumble and fumble sometimes? Absolutely. But you know what? I look to say, God, help me stay on course. Help me stay on target. Help me to be everything that you've called me to be. Because it's not me. It's your people who are at stake in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. I just felt it was necessary to give my testimony. Even if I have to do it on this recorded session, I will release this testimony so you'll understand. I pray that you'll get an opportunity to hear it and see it uh, later on throughout this day. In the name of the Lord. Well, let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray as we begin to study the commission and the call of the apostle, God, in the name of Jesus, that you would open up in your, your people a heart to understand who they are, what their purpose is, what their call is, what you've assigned to them, Father, in the name of Jesus, that you would take them to a new place in you, in the name of Jesus. And I bless you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thank you for taking the time to watch this today, and I pray that it is a blessing to you, and I always like to end with this affirmation, and that is that God is still on the throne, the devil is defeated, and Jesus is Lord. You be blessed.